Hey guys, welcome back. Um, we are at the big refill tonight. Uh, you haven't been out with us last weekend, but last weekend we shot that 280 pound boar and uh, two other boars, three total, the boar trifecta. Um, two of them have pretty, had pretty big cutters and uh, I think there was a good chance that one of them was the one who actually uh, messed up those, those dogs, but uh, that was a, was a good a long night. It was an all-nighter for me. I so, actually stayed up the whole day the next day. I went to bed at like eight or nine, so 36 hours, but uh, otherwise it would have just been messed up, like cycle-wise. But tonight we have Wayne with us, a friend of Micah's. Have, have, nope, you, thank you. have you hopped on it before or no? Yes, yeah. Thermal? Back thermal too? Not, not thermal, no. no. But dogs, okay. dogs and then with the rifles during the day, but not now. Okay. Mm -mm. So it's the first time thermal under the week. Cool. Yep, absolutely. Um, um, we, have, we have my Steyr with me, the uh, Excite uh, 4K on top, it's the 5 to 20. Um, so we have something long reaching um, in case something comes out. Um, you probably take it off because I don't have I have only one mount option for the light, so once it, uh, you know, once it hits uh, sunset, we're gonna have to take it off the tripod and just put the light on, on there, and then uh, just use a, a mono stick or whatever. But for now, um, we have the north wind. That's why we're down here. In, that's why we are down here in this, in this pocket right now. The wind is blowing this way. Uh, the nice part is we have Chris's uh, Polaris Ranger with us again. That saved our butts last weekend because otherwise we wouldn't have been able to drag all these boars together in one spot. They were all like just all over the wheat field and uh, 280 pounds. I'm not dragging that. So we're getting lazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm getting old. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's nice. I don't feel exhausted yet. We didn't have to schlep those backpacks all the way down here. Just you know, Keep hopping the, the yards, hopping in the range and getting out here is super nice. So <clears> thank you, Chris. As we came down here, we saw some buzzards on the side of the property and something dead on the ground, obviously. So we walked up to it and it was a dead calf. And then you heard from uh, Glenn, the ranch manager here, right? That yeah. They, something has taken some calves. Yeah. They can't confirm it, but that's what they think it is. So mountain lion, <clears throat> right? Yeah. So there's a possibility there's a mountain lion out here. That's maybe why that calf is in the water. It's also possible that calf was just not careful enough and tripped and fell. I mean, we had this, this dead cow in the water once before and a friend of mine, Austin, and I pulled it out with the, the four wheel and everything. So, I mean, cows drown for stupid reasons. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. So Cattleman right here. <laughs> oh, are you? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, what's your take on it? Uh, it looks like, I mean, it looks like something killed it. Yeah? Yeah. And those, all those budgets around there, they get to fighting over it. So I bet they were fighting over it, and then they knocked it in the in the tanks while I was in the water. Hmm. Yeah. Do you think the buzzards can pull a calf? Oh yeah. That? Mm -hmm. that many of them? Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. There's probably what ten or fifteen when we walked. Yeah, there were quite a few. I'll take the expert word because <laughs> I don't know anything about cows. Well, I'll start putting two and two together because we'll we'll send you that that picture. But there's a definite cat. It's not a bobcat. Yeah. It's a lion. Yeah. And that was, I mean, a mile from here. Yeah. A young one, but. They travel a lot too. Yeah. yeah, they travel a lot of miles in a day. And then we recently had news out of Huddle actually, which is just around the corner here, that there was a mountain lion in one of the backyards in, you know, just in a, well, I guess I have, I, I'm not quite sure if it was a residential area in like a neighborhood or if it was a little bit more rural, but there's an, there was a mountain lion sighting, uh, you know, in, in Huddle. So they are around and if we, you know, if we cross paths, we'll try to take one. All right, let's get going and uh, see if we can uh, see some hogs.
That beam hasn't got at, at two, uh, two jams. It's like a little plus track or something like that. It looked like those, there were some that dropped up here. Or the shot, shot, I shot the third one. The, one of the bigger ones as he was going back here and he was heading toward the tree line. I got him for sure, but I didn't see him drop. Okay. He kept walking, so I don't know. He walks like he's wounded. You guys are ready? Wayne, you got him? Chris? No, I lost him. Alright, three. Chris? Yep. Three, two, one. He's gonna go down. He did not go down after these first two hits, um, but he gave us two more opportunities when we went after him and we uh, hit him about three more times. At this point he lay down, but his ears were still up, so we came up behind him and at about six feet from him he turned around and tried to charge us. So Micah took his tag 13, I took my sidearm and we put it to an end. This boar also had an old injury, his shoulder was already destroyed and yet it took multiple rounds to put him out. Never underestimate feral hawks, they're tough animals. Uh, even though we never experienced the board charging us before, we never let our guard down. Put it in the 
Maybe that was his wound, maybe? No, I think that uh, was that shoulder. Right, right, right in here. Mm -hmm. He got shot in the wall. Yeah. All right, well, he's not going to load up by himself, so. <laughs> So we just called in, I think, three hawks tonight. One boar coming in from the tree line. Maybe two. Big boar from back there, which I think might have come in for us too. And then recently we called in one uh, at that new property. So for some time we didn't have much success, but now it seems like it's picking up again. So I don't know if it's maybe seasonal, depending on the time of the year, depending on what they do. We ran, um, Saw hysteria for a while, boar magnet. Uh, I think that's it. Uh, maybe a little squeal in between. Just to try to get this mountain line in, but uh, I think ultimately saw hysteria or boar magnet is what's called in those. So, anyways, hawk calling works. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right, it's what, midnight? 12.30. 12.30, great. Um, we had one group come in in the beginning, it was, I don't know, it was fairly early. With the wind the way it was, we just went straight for them. Uh, the interesting part is once we got like within maybe 100, 120 yards, all of a sudden they started running towards us. So I'm um, not sure if they heard our movements maybe in, in the, you know, in the weeds, in the grass or whatever, and thought there's more hogs and they wanted to connect to them. Um, whatever it was, they came running at us. We were probably we probably started shooting at 40 yards, maybe. Probably so. It was interesting mm -hmm. because you said 120, and then you said 80, and I think you said 60 or 50. They were right there on us. I could see them yeah. naked eye with the with the moonlight. Yeah. So Wayne was shooting uh, Micah's AR-15, which is that Wilson Combat. Yeah, the 7.62 by 40. Yeah. Um, with the Trigigon on top, or the RR defense, I guess. And then uh, Micah was. Uh, manning the uh, Tech 13. And I mean, yeah. tonight would have been a good night for it, right? Yeah. Because you could s just pick him up, right? Yeah. You could see the shadows and stuff. But uh, so we took a couple of shots, and um, I looked at the video on the scope. Um, I'm shooting the AR 15 with the uh, 6.5 Grendel, and um, I hit two in the beginning. I had uh, one bigger one, and this might have been, was it a saw over there, maybe? I'm not sure if that's a saw or not, but. Um, I don't know, Wayne, if you got one or not. I got one, but it took off back in the brush. Okay. Never found it. And then we started, well, we had a long pause. There was nothing coming in for maybe yeah. an hour or two. Yeah, right? at least an hour. Yeah. So we ran the HP bullet, right? And yep. I ran pig, pig magnet first, saw hysteria, little squealer. And I think when, when we ran saw hysteria in the end, it's when this guy came in. Yeah. And you saw him first, I think. Yeah, Wayne. Yeah, he was in the brush line. He was just mm -hmm. walking back and forth, not coming out of the brush. Yeah. But you could tell, like, he was looking at the call, mm -hmm. uh, trying to figure out what's going on. And he was putting his nose up, trying to see if he can pick something up. And uh, so Chris, Wayne, and I get together and, um, and just nailed him. I mean, he went down immediately, mm -hmm. right? We kept the uh, call running. And then further in the back of the property, we had no another one come in. And he was probably. I don't know, 300 yards out at that point. I mean, it was pretty far. Luckily, we had the train coming. If it wasn't yeah, for the yeah. train, I don't think he would be here right now. Well, it's crazy because y'all, I stayed here. Y'all went and drugged that smaller bore back with, I think, two or three different flashlights, regular light, and got, the, got brought him back, got everything organized, and literally within five minutes, I think you spotted him, this big one. So he was right up there while we were doing all this. The way he was walking, you could tell this, his head was going kind of up and down in a 
in a way which only a wounded hawk would do. So it turns out after we had him down, um, his shoulder was broken. So at this point he's, he's already hurt and wounded. So we shoot him and we hit him. He runs, we go after him, right? So we, we run after him and uh, hit him, I think another round, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, two or three hits, but he still kept going, right? And at some point he lay down. I think that would be the perfect opportunity for Micah to to uh, take the tag 13 after him, and he has, has a buckshot load right yeah. now, right? Double on. Okay. Is it the Remington? Yeah, Remington. Yeah. He gets up again, right? He, I mean, I saw his ears popping up when we got close, and all of a sudden he gets up again, runs again, we shoot again. I think that was the third round then. And he's still moving, so we, we move up uh, closer. We're probably at 10 yards at this point. I mean, we've been running and whatnot. Chris was trying to get uh, keep keep up, but he had the star air with him. There's no sling on it, so he like fell back. But then we are 10 yards maybe or closer. No, probably I closer. Mean, that was five. Yeah, yeah. yeah was like a few feet, right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, he's down, but uh, all of a sudden he gets up and uh, sees us and everything, and he's trying to charge us at this point. So. <laughs> All I remember is I hear a blast of, of a buckshot from my left. Uh, oh, I actually felt the blast. <laughs> like I, I felt the blast of buckshot to my left. And then I, I had the, my HK out and I, I was popping him too. But um, that, was, uh, that was pretty fun, right? Yeah, it was, uh, he was coming after us. It was close. Can you imagine if those cutters, if you would have no. gotten to us? Yeah. So, yeah. That's now the second weekend in a row where we um, take well a big boar and then uh, you know the cutters on him. So <coughs> this was fun. This was a good hunt. Yeah, that was a great hunt. Thank you. How'd the thermal do? Great. Yeah. Good. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. First time. You did good. I mean, that's the thing. Right? If you shoot, well, you shot a rifle you never shot before. Mm -hmm. You shot thermal you never did before. Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess usually you do hog dogging or whatever right. you want to call yeah. it. Yeah. So no, it's a, it's couldn't, have, couldn't have been better. Mm. Yeah. All right. I guess it's close to 1, 1 a.m. We might hit one more property, see if he can spot some from the road and uh, go after it if, if, if he can. Otherwise, this was already good enough. Nice job. Nice job. Texas Yard. Yeah. We were about to head out when Micah uh, did one last scan of the field and discovered this group moving in pretty fast. Uh, so we drop everything and go after them. That low back there? Oh, damn, yeah. Let's say if these two guys are, it's 275. Damn, is that tailgate all bent now? No, I think it's just because of your feet. Riding away with 
<laughs> oh, can you guys drag that one behind you? Yeah. Jeep? Yeah. So we're going to drag, drag it through the ditch yeah. and come back up. So as we finished our last video, I guess uh, Chris and I were packing up and uh, all of a sudden he guys say, there's Mohawks out there. And the, the, so did they come in over the, across the road? Or? Yeah, they crossed from the property to the west. And uh, I guess from, from looking through the thermal, there was a group of 20 or something maybe? You count about 19, 20? 19. 19, oh, pretty close, yeah. yeah. So, um, we dropped everything and left our backpacks with the Polaris and the few hogs we had and went up went up to that group and uh, I guess we were kind of lucky that there was a car coming in and I guess they blasted music or something, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Two things, one we had some cover, we could move a little more and then a second, they actually scared those hogs kind of like in our direction. Yeah, they were they were still pretty far out though. They they came our way, but further out. So I guess um, I don't know anywhere between 100 and 200 yards probably. Mm -hmm. um, and then we made our way towards uh, towards them through the weed. And that, I mean personally, I thought we were pretty lucky because we were moving fast and pretty loud, and we didn't really form them too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I was just expecting them to take off like any moment. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm surprised we got that close. How close were we, I guess? I don't know. Uh, I wouldn't. Yeah. Hundred? Hundred yards. Yeah, that was, I mean, it was good. We had decent backdrop. There was no cows in the back when we started shooting. They were in that tall grass, too. I don't know if that, they felt a little more secure or couldn't see as much. And See we us have wind in our favor too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. <coughs> well, we, we got ready. So it was uh, Wayne, you, and then Chris, and I again. Um, and I saw at least two drop in the first first round. Mm -hmm. right? And then uh, we had some follow up shots, and I heard I heard several hits. Oh yeah. And then we had the one the big boar, which mm -hmm. I tried to follow up too, but before I was able to take a shot, one of you guys hit him, so he kind of went down. Mm -hmm. And then we had a few uh, move away. Micah and I uh, went after a, a wounded sow and I wanted to see if uh, Micah couldn't uh, use his tech 13 to go after it. Um, but we en I ended up just using the my handgun. But then you guys saw some more, right? Yeah, we Chris had some more over, over back to the east. I shot one, he dropped, and that's when I was out of shells. Chris came over and took a shot and he drop that one too but we just found the one yeah yeah so all in all we have nine right now well <laughs> eight in the bed there's one down there um the ranger is maxed out <laughs> yeah there's maybe a two inch uh, ground clearance left i think the capacity is like 600 pounds 600 yeah yeah we're way over yeah. that yeah so i'll probably double that yeah <laughs> and then uh we have probably three or four not recovered. Yeah. So you see, it was interesting when you shot. You were shooting back toward the tree line, and the suppressed action. And it went. The sound went out. Bounced back off those trees. I think it shot them. It took the hog, split them, and then they came back toward us. Mm -hmm. But they split. So there were some to the left, some to the right. Yeah. So take which one you want to take? Yeah. So this one is the one we we took first. I think um, we said probably two sixty or something. This one is bigger. What do you, what do you, Wayne said closer to, closer to three. Close to three Chris, you have a head in your freezer already. I have a head in my freezer actually. I'll take one. I don't even know. I've got one in uh, Round Rock with Chris. Yeah. Getting worked on. My dad's got another one buried somewhere. We should just I'll drop off three more heads with Chris's <laughs> face. <laughs> yeah, we should take him and I mean just get him done with <coughs> Chris. For a European mount? Bleached. Bleach it all out, yeah. And, and he does a really good job. Like it really He'll looks soak really it good. He'll kerosene good. for four or six months. He said it depends. He just keeps checking. He pulls. He said so much um, fat inside their the hog bone. It's different than a deer. That has to really soak in that kerosene. It pulls out all that that fat. Yeah, he said if you bury it 
and then try to bleach it. He said all that fat will start leaching out and they'll turn real yellow within three months to a year. <clears throat> so Chris, you might have two more heads coming your way. Oh, good job, Mr. Rain. Yeah. Awesome. Nice job, Wayne. Thanks again. Thanks Thanks again. Uh, thank you guys again for watching. Good job, Chris. Thank you, sir. Awesome. And uh, didn't didn't top our record, but it's pretty it's good. Great night, yeah. yeah. I just <coughs> yeah, I just want to get home and take a shower at this point. So thanks again for watching, guys, and uh, we'll see you next time.